This is Twit. Tiny Eleven. What's that all about? Yeah, I don't know if you heard of this project. It, there was a Tiny Ten project as well. And, um, you know, thank you, sir. Might I have another? Um, <laughs> this is a project. Uh, I don't know the person's name. It's NT Dev. He's, a, he's on uh, Twitter and he's on the Internet Archive and, you know, whatever. But he basically he's taking the Windows 11 installer and trying to strip it down to something much smaller. Mm. And uh, he just released the latest version. He's kind of renaming it in, uh, so that it's clear which version it is. He's calling it 2311, uh, 23H2, which might have been a little clearer, but uh, that's okay. Um, so it lines up with the 23H2 release, obviously. Um, it's 20% smaller than the original image he did for 23H2 a couple months ago um, and is significantly smaller than the Microsoft version, right? So 3.5 gigabytes for the ISO file versus about 6.2, I think it is for the normal Windows 11 ISO. So the the big change and the reason I'm discussing it now is he actually got servicing to work. And what that means is you can install this thing on a computer and uh, just get Windows updates normally, but be, where just before you had to kind of manually download those things. Um, so that's a big step. And why would you do this? Um, the primary purpose of it is to allow Windows 11 to run on lower end hardware, you know, mm. this specifically hardware that isn't, um, uh, qualified, you know, to run Windows 11. But honestly, I think there's a side benefit to it as well, which is that you get a lot less of the crap. Right. right. Um, so always the question is how much are you adding back in again? Like obviously yep, ex- edge is uninstalled. So edge is uninstalled. That's true. So you can install it if you want to. Um, of course that's, that's all in flux right now anyway. Right. We know that Microsoft edge will be uninstallable in the EEA soon, but mm-hmm. Um, you can use WinGet to install anything, basically. Um, the Xbox components aren't installed by default was one of the things he called out. But if you install any game from the store that uses Xbox, that stuff will be enabled and it will work normally. Nice. So this one, I, I feel like it's crossed a threshold where it's starting to be viable. I wouldn't say for mainstream slash normal people, but for technical people. Yeah, no, um, this then becomes your logical starting point then, right? This is instead of having a Swiss Army knife with all the blades already in it, it's like, just give me a couple and I'll get the others that I need. From a, Yes. From, and uh, So, go ahead. Sorry. I, well, I was just going to well, say from a security gonna, perspective, is there concern about using a, an installer from a third yeah. party? Yeah, there is. Uh, we don't know who this person is and we shouldn't trust him, um, but, <laughs> but people do and... Again, I, this has been around for a while. I mean, there was a Tiny 10, like I said, and I looked at Tiny 11 back in, I don't know, February, March earlier this year, and interesting, but not quite what I was looking for. I think with the serviceability uh, functionality that is there now, it becomes a lot more interesting. Um, and it, look, it's not, I, I've written and talked a lot about WinGet, which is the Windows Package Manager. It's a command line tool, but it's not, it's not super hard to use. So if you need a couple of things that aren't in that base install, uh, you should be able to get up to speed. So I'm testing this now. I want to see if this is viable. Um, see if it makes and, a and, good workflow going forward. Because the real question is, what are you, what are you, yeah, what are you missing? installing by default yep. in, a, in a regular install that you never use? That's right. Yeah, and I and I don't know how other people do things, but for phones and computers, with me, I will do a clean install. And there's a couple of things that I know I need, right? So I install that stuff. And then the the rest of that computer's life cycle is me occasionally saying, oh, right, I need this. Oh, oh right, I need this. You know, and so you kind of install as you go. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm kind of following that path here just to see how, you know, see how it works. And, and we'll see. I just, uh, it just happened this week. I'm, I need a bit more time with it. I don't want to give a glowing endorsement quite yet, but I, this is interesting. And, it, and, and uh, I can't remember exactly what Richard said earlier, but it reminded me of Visual Studio Code where you start with this really stripped down thing and you can just add the components you want. And uh, that's one of the things I really like about Visual Studio Code. In fact, I think that's a viable model for web browsers and for lots of different kinds of software. Um, in this sense, uh, this is treating Windows in that same way, you know, give you uh, the most stripped down version of the OS possible and then allow you, the user, to decide what gets installed, not just take everything. It just begs um, the question, why doesn't Microsoft do this? So, yeah, so Microsoft, um, oh dear. their strategy, um, which I, is probably not unique in the platform OS space, I guess, is that things work better together. And if you have everything to get, you know, there, you can ensure that it always works. And there's this baseline of functionality. And a lot of the 
the bad behaviors in Windows 11. It's not always for bad behaviors, but a lot of the bad behaviors in Windows 11 are tied to this kind of way of doing things, which is, you know, we're going to ignore your browser choice because we want, because we are going to load Edge, which you've said you don't want, so that we can go to some MSN website, which is terrible and serves ads and whatever. And we want to make sure you get that full experience because it benefits Microsoft, right? In that case. Um, I guess I mean, there are other there's examples. There's a subtext so, that you're getting that there, which is that there are employees inside of Microsoft who are scorecarded based on the number of installs of their particular yes, exactly. tool. I was going to say that. I don't really care what you want. Yeah. I care about what I get. Hey, that this thing that I made needs to make it into the system, thing. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that's where well, my bonus okay. lives. I, I, so just to be fair, I will say there are instances where this does benefit people. So, for example, um, uh, not the Microsoft Edge stuff that doesn't benefit anybody, but you know you, you have a uh, a set of applications like the snipping tool and Paint and um, the ClipChamp that are standalone apps, but they also kind of work together. So if one of those things is not on the system and you have created a video clip of the, like a screen recording and you want to edit it, it it's just a seamless kind of integration uh, by default. If ClipChamp wasn't installed on that computer, you would just get a I don't know what you would get, actually, because I've never tried it, but I assume what you'd get is a uh, a Microsoft Store installer request, and then you could go from there. But yeah. just having it all there, yeah, the no, theory I, is, look, we have infinite PC resources, you know. I think it's good for, as you said, the, the normal user, because think about if you are out and about and you pull out that laptop and you try to do one of these, and then you'd, you're not anywhere near an internet connection, and suddenly you can't use this tool yeah, that you expect to right. be able to use. So, yep. yeah, I, I understand wanting to have uh, as much of it I mean, this is true of data as well, right? We can, I, I've complained a lot about uh, Microsoft's behaviors with regard to OneDrive and forcing people to use folder backup and so forth. But I've also been on a plane, double clicked on a file and it doesn't load because I don't have it synced locally. And no, I can't do the thing I was going to do. Mm -hmm. you know? Can we go back so. to that part where I didn't have an internet connection? Because I don't want to live in that world. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. oh, dear. I think of it as takeoff and landing. Yeah, <laughs> those are the only times I'm disconnected. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I like the idea for folks who are particular about their systems and maybe I ultimately, you know, okay, it reminds me <laughs> of uh, it's a little bit like when you go through a traumatic experience and oh, to, to re <laughs> that was not what I thought you were going to say, but go on. <laughs> to, to reclaim control in your life, you decide to do something wild. Oftentimes that results in someone like bleaching their hair blonde or shaving their hair. Head. I don't know why it's a lot of hair things, but um, or buying a new car when you go through your midlife crisis. And so with this, it's like I want I feel like I need to have the absolute control over this system. So I'm going to install this thin or not thin client. That's a different term, but I'm going to install this yeah. very tiny thing and build everything up from there because then I don't have to worry about them. It's, well, this it's is, a lot um, of management, right? Well, I mean, that's see, that's the question uh, in a way, right? Is it a lot of management? I mean, I, that's what I'm trying to kind of figure out. So mm -hmm. in the old days, and I mean like the 1990s old days, if you installed something like Windows 98 or Windows 2000 was like this, Windows setup would bring up these dialog boxes that would have a list of applications, little check boxes and kind of through and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, there'd be sub menus and all that. So there are these two extremes of you get to pick everything up front and it's really tedious and it takes a long time and you don't know what you're doing. So you're not really even sure what to pick or Microsoft just installs everything for you and you don't really think about it or worry about it. And I, I, my argument, I think probably always has been, we should just have that choice. You know, I, there will be people who will just click through and say, yep, give me everything. And there will be people who say, no, I actually do want to go in and pick what I want. Um, so I don't know, you know, windows uh, today, Honestly, it's not engineered all that differently, but it's it's just that what the UI that it presents doesn't give you these choices. I think it depends on the apps and the services. There are certain things you could you could be really silly and go into um, you know startup apps and task manager, or actually in the settings app or whatever, and turn things off that you need. You know, mm -hmm. you reboot your computer and now you don't have sound. <laughs> and you think something's wrong, and what's wrong is you because you turned off the real tech thing or whatever the heck it was in the startup group. Um, so I, 
it, it's a weird world we're in because um, it's not like configuring like a CD player for a car. It's like configuring something in the engine for a car. Mm. You know, uh, some people do know what that stuff is, but a lot of people don't. I pulled this fuse and now suddenly my car is making a strange sound. Yeah. What's wrong with my car? What? What's? Why is it my car's fault? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You> exactly. <know? laughs> yeah. Oh, fair enough. Um, so yeah, I guess install Tiny Eleven at your own peril. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. And and right. And not to be dramatic about it, but I mean, yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. So, uh, but I but it's interesting. I I think this is, I I like this kind of effort. There's a I talked about a tip uh, probably a couple months ago where using the normal Windows Eleven installer, the Windows Setup program, you can uh, turn off a lot of the promotional stuff and and not have a bunch of crap were installed you come up with a really clean start menu that's another approach it's kind of in the middle um the start menu is clean but you still have everything still installed right mm -hmm. it's not like it, it didn't cut anything off other than the crap you know the spotify um what else is in the start menu by default i don't even know anymore i clean mine up but all that's you know that junk that's kind of just there um linkedin is one of them you know pc makers put their own stuff on there et cetera et cetera so there's different ways, you know, there's different things you can do. This is on the more extreme side, I guess, but, but again, it's gotten, it's actually gotten interesting back in uh, February. I would have, I wouldn't have recommended this to anybody, but um, today it's like, yeah, if you're listening to the show, I mean, this, you might want to, you might want to look at this. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. Provide more support for MSP teams by keeping their skills up to date in all aspects of IT, including MS Cloud, AWS, CompTIA, and so much more. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. 